Hey guys, welcome back to the channel on our regular Sunday morning. Today I have the mid-size SKX series. This is the new 38 millimeter. Well, it's been out for about a year. This is the first time I've had a chance to review one of these things. Anyway, this is model number SRPK31. Let's check it out. All right, guys, well, check this thing out, but first check out my Amazon shopping channel. If you like any of the watches I've reviewed on my channel, as y'all know, get a very small commission if you buy from my Amazon store. So whenever you do so, I definitely appreciate it. So typical Seiko packaging, let's go ahead and open this up here. And guys, this is basically just a smaller version of the SKX. I mean, everything is literally the same. Uh, of course, you know, you get all your paperwork and stuff in there. All right, let's put this away. And this is not going to be a very long review because I reviewed one of these a few years ago. They haven't changed. This, again, is just a smaller version. You even get a smaller little box. It's supposed to look like sheet metal. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Anyway, let's open this thing up. Blah, 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 blah. Crap we don't care about. Here is the watch. Now, 38 millimeters is honestly as small as I would ever want to go. Uh, let me pull this tag out here. Um... I mean, honestly, that's really getting to my limits. 38 millimeters, you know, today it's not really considered small, but gosh, just a few years ago, a 38 millimeter watch would be considered pretty small for a dude. Uh, but if you're a smaller guy, obviously this will work out great for you. Uh, I'm a big guy. I got a big old fat wrist <laughs> at eight inches. Uh, so this does look a little bit small on me, but again, it's about as small as I would go. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go over all the specs you need to know. Uh, and then I'll put uh, all the other stuff you need down there in the description field if you want to nerd out on all the other specs. And I'll bring in one of the older ones that I reviewed, I guess, like four years ago. One of the full-size ones, which is 42 and a half millimeters. And just kind of show you a brief size comparison. All right, guys, let's go over the seven specs you need to know. And if you want to learn everything about the watch and nerd out, make sure you head down there in the description field. And I'll show you all the other specs. So you're looking at a 38 millimeter stainless steel case. The original version had a 42.5 millimeter stainless steel case. Uh, thickness on this one is 12.1 millimeters. Uh, the original has a 13.4 millimeter uh, thickness. And lug to lug on this one is 44.2 millimeters. The original has a 46 millimeter case. And again, if you want to learn everything else about this watch, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, again, this is just like a honey, I shrunk the watch uh, <laughs> type of deal. Uh, but anyway, if you want to learn everything about the watch, make sure you check down in the description field and uh, I'll show you everything else you need to know. So again, I mean, it's basically the same watch, same look, same everything, just shrunken down, uh, same bracelet, clasp, you know, still got the same um, stamp scissor clasp like all of these do. Um, get this tag out of the way here. All right, so, you know, there's your case back. You got your rotor right there. You got your see-through case back. It is a screw-down case back. And again, guys, this is not going to be a full review because I reviewed one of these, I guess, four years ago. And again, it's the same watch. So there you go. I've always liked these champagne dials. Uh, really nice looking dial. Very legible. You got um, the uh, little black accents all over the uh, the hour and minute hand. Of course, the second hand has got the lollipop on the end. Uh, you have got, it looks like black um, bezels and also kind of chrome, black and chrome at the same time uh, around each index. So it does make it really, really easy to uh, read the time on this thing. Uh, you don't have a border around the day and date, which is not a big deal to me, but of course you still get it because this is still the 4R36 movement. Crowns over here at four o'clock, plenty of knurling as usual. These crowns are not signed. And uh, you get a really nice click action on the bezel. Let's see if everything lines up which I believe it does on this one because I checked it earlier. Yep, it lines up. Nice job, Seiko. Of course, you got your just your typical aluminum insert. And these come in a couple different colorways. Uh, if you want to get a different colorway of this, let me see what other colorways this comes in. Yeah, black, orange, uh, kind of like that Tiffany blue. Uh, so you get a couple different colors. And this honestly is my favorite, man. I like the orange as well, uh, but I really, really like this... Um, this uh, champagne color. And of course, these are made in Japan, which is really cool. So again, guys, not gonna be a super long review. Actually, let me go ahead and bring in the original so you can do a size comparison. It's 
there you go. I mean, it's quite a substantial size difference, as you can see. But still the same overall look. Uh, I mean, this one's just bigger. And both, this one's also made in Japan as well. Uh, this is the made in Japan version, which is the SBSA009. If it was for the rest of the world in North America, it'd be the SRPD59. That's what this one is. But I got this one when these first new SKXs came out. And I absolutely love this watch. Really, really like this watch a lot. And I like this one. But honestly, eh, it's just, eh, I don't know. It's a little tiny bit too small for me. But still a fantastic watch. Really, really nice looking watch. Anyway, if you want to get one of these, actually, you know what? Ah, before, before I forget, let me try this thing on real quick. Show you what it looks like on the wrist. Let me give you a loom shot. Gosh, I almost forgot. All right, let me see what we got here. I mean, it looks better than I thought. Honestly, it doesn't look as small as I thought it would. Wow. Maybe send this one back and get the orange version so we can, you know, have a big brother with this one. You know what? While I'm here, let me try both of these. See if I can get both of these on my wrist at the same time. All right, so there they both are on my wrist. Y'all tell me what you think. What's your personal opinion on both of them? Uh, which one do you like better on my wrist as far as the size goes and or the color if you like the, the orange better than the uh, champagne or vice versa? So this is actually more like a pearl. You know what? I'm more I'm looking at it. It's more like a pearl color, not really a like a more yellowish champagne. It's more of like a pearl dial. Man, it's really good looking. Anyway, there you go. All right, we go ahead and take both of these off. And let's go ahead and uh, kill the uh, studio light and these monitors. And let's zap this thing. I mean, we know what's going to happen. It's Luma Bright. We all know what's going to happen. It's going to have fantastic loom as usual. In fact, I'll go ahead and zap both of them. We know what's going to happen here. All right, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. At least under the camera, the kind of pearl dial reflects a lot of that loom, whereas the orange dial does not. So this one, it appears, you know, to the camera, that's what it seems, but to the naked eye, they're both lit up the same, and the dial on this one's not really, not really reflecting the light. They just both look like they have fantastic loom, which they both do, obviously. So there you go. Interesting. All right, guys, let me go ahead and cut everything back on. Tell me what you think of this new 38 millimeter case size. Again, same movement, same everything else, same water resistance. Uh, it's just the size that's different. That's really it. I mean, honestly, that is it. It's just the size difference. No other changes to this thing. Anyway, if you want to uh, head on over to uh, my Amazon channel. You can pick one of these up for $240. I'll make sure to put that link down there in the description field for you. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification bell if you like my content, and I hope you do. And thanks so much for watching. I've got a whole bunch of new stuff coming, as I always do. And I'll see you all in the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.